Hello and welcome to Banama Property Hot Seat presented by Sun Surya. I'm Vincent and with me is my co-host Kristan. Together with us today is our Honourable Deputy Minister of Housing and Local Government, YB Datuk Raja Kamaro Barin Shah. Welcome YB. Thank you. Welcome Thank YB. You. Well, you. being a property show, uh, having KBKD is something that we really cannot miss and, and, and especially the last few weeks. We okay. have the National Housing Policy 2.0, the National Community Policy, and then we have the HOC, the Home Ownership Campaign, as well as the National Affordable Housing Policy. Yeah. So before that, we must have you. Yes. Sure. YB, we interviewed YB Minister Zuraida during our first episode. Mm -hmm. And in uh, such a short two months period itself, we have seen many things that has been done by your KPKT, your ministry itself. So let's begin hearing from you today, yeah? So my first question, YB, is the HOC Home Ownership Campaign is ongoing at the moment until 30th of June 2019. Mm -hmm. And the expos have taken place in various locations nationwide. So YB, are you happy with the outcome so far? What has KPKT learned moving forward? Yes, uh, I think the kickoff when we had the uh, Housing Ownership uh, Campaign uh, from the 1st to the 3rd of March was uh, quite a resounding success because we got a lot of feedback and we got a lot of uh, participants who came in and uh, it is a good beginning for our six months program and it is uh, the initial part um, from when we are going to move on from state to state so that was a very good eye-opener as to what and how we should move from now on yeah? because uh, those who came were not only from the Klang Valley and Kuala Lumpur, mm. and there were those from outlying areas and even as far as Penang. So uh, we got a, a quite a good cross-section of society who came in looking at the properties and uh, we can have a good idea of what they're looking for now. And um, basically, you know, we are hoping to uh, more resolve the affordable housing uh, situation because uh, those seems to be the group that is in most dire uh, well, needs of uh, assistance and help. Yeah. So okay. maybe that's a very positive answer. Maybe mm. Did you track the transactions of volumes and values so far? What, what is the record? Yeah, the, the values was quite uh, encouraging. Mm. Uh, well, just to give you an idea, mm. for SPNB alone, uh, well, we managed to sell about 500 uh, units, 503 units to be wow. exact and um, a total of about 124 million yeah, mm. uh, across uh, sales. And uh, as for the, um, what do you call it, uh, Prima, yes. we managed to sell about 183 units uh, with sales about 11.7 million. So these two were the parts that we were hoping to give most emphasis to affordable uh, home sectors, uh, which showed a great encouragement from the beginning. Yeah. Mm. Wabi, if I can just take on your answer just now, you mentioned that uh, first of all, it's a kickoff, the very successful yes. one from the first or third of March, yeah. right? And then you mentioned a six month, right? A six month program. So I'm just saying that if we kick off in March, mm. supposedly six months, we should be looking for some extension until September, right? Yes, um, most probably if the uh, demand and the uh, resounding success will continue. Uh, we probably be looking at that because we're moving from state to state. Right. Uh, for my own home state, it's going to be next week, I think. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So we'll be um, able to gauge uh, the reception from uh, the different various parts of Malaysia. So the ministry is considering extension. Yes. Depending definitely. on the response. Yes, we're keeping yes. it very open. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So YB, the key objective of the HOC are to encourage uh, first home ownership yes. and to clear the ready stocks of mm. the housing developers, the property developers. Now, why 
we are, we are a bit curious. The public is also a bit curious. Why is incentives applicable also for those who are purchasing their second and even third home? Um, but not for the sub-sale properties in the market. Yeah. Why is it so? Because it seems to us that this is a little bit more for, HOC is actually more for developers, but not for the sub-sale properties. Uh, I think uh, we have to look at uh, the general picture because uh, crowds will draw more crowds. Mm -hmm. So if we were to confine it to two specific <coughs> group, maybe you are looking at a very narrow uh, group of people. So by you know, inclusivity in the opening up of the opportunities, we be able to attract a wider spectrum of people. So, but still, we do not lose the main focus, that is the affordable homes. Uh, those that is, uh, strictly speaking, below 300,000 is the main uh, emphasis that we're concentrating on. And of course, the next category is from 300 to 500. I see. So, yeah, why we, we understand that the incentive being offered under HOC yeah. is about mm. the stamp duty exemption, mm. Mm. for example, uh, up to 1 million, yes. and then also the, the associating facility agreement for the yeah. loan for the waiver as well. So I'm just highlighting here is, is that, you know, uh, I also know as a lawyer, mm. I'm a practicing lawyer and I know that, you know, it's not gazetted. So what's the difficulty now? Is it any challenge to that? Because we know it's being announced, yes. but what about the fact that it is legally enforceable? Well, uh, we are having these incentives uh, because we want to, like I said, kickstart and create a real stimulus, not sure. just a token stimulus. Sure. So the stamp duty and even throwing some freebies, right. which are like, you know, as a lawyer, as we know, normally sure. it is not uh, allowable. But at this period, especially the, the first six months, we are allowing a lot of things to be thrown in mm -hmm. as an incentives. And this is one way that we hope will uh, okay. create more interest, uh, more... Yeah. Yep. Uh, what you call it, uh, yeah, attraction to what we are holding under uh, the initial expo yeah. at KLCC because uh, yeah. there is the opportunity for us to bring all the players under one roof. Sure. It is very important because it is not just the buyers yeah, who are congregating there that we want to mm. uh, interact with. It's also mm. the doability of the deal because there are a lot of interested parties but financing and the financial aspect is the next stumbling block. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we have yeah. some banks coming mm -hmm. in. Um, you know, very good. Okay. We had good one of the banks. banks. YB. Sorry. YB, please hold on to your thoughts. Yeah. The good one of banks. We will talk about the banks. We will resume our discussion once we come back from the break. Okay. Cari hadiah untuk hari ibu bapa? Ada Jintel. Jintel di Spesta dengan teknologi Moon Hand Massage yang terkini. Memberi urutan yang menyenangkan dan selesa. Sesuai untuk ibu bapa kesayangan anda.
Welcome back to Banama Property Hot Seat presented by Sun Surya. And Chris and Vincent is in the house here. And together with us, we have the Deputy Minister of Housing and Local Government, uh, YB Dato Kamaro um, Bahrain Shah. So let's back to the hot seat, right? I think just now flow very slowly. You say that the, one of the key stakeholders uh, or to mm. ensure a good home ownership campaign, yeah. we can't run too far away from the bank and financial yes. institution. Yeah. But so far, they've been very quiet. I mean, in announcement, we hear a lot from the housing developer, we hear a lot from the, the authority as to what they want to do. Then what is their commitment into this? The public currently have very little information. Loan rejection remain very high. Loan remain a concern. For without a proper loan or financing, we really cannot own. So what's the take on this? Yes, uh, as rightly pointed, there are a lot of interest in acquiring property, right. but whether they are eligible or they are you know, able to come up with finance is another matter. Sure. So that's why when we had the home ownership uh, sure. campaign in KLCC Convention Centre, we were able to bring the whole lot together so that they can sure. interact with the banks and among the major banks like uh, May Banks, IMB and RHB Bank, uh, they were there with public, the public is able to engage them. And uh, we also are trying to talk to the banks that they should try to be a bit more innovative, a bit more flexible. We understand that the Bank Nagara has their own guidelines sure. that they have to adhere by. Sure. But uh, these are times that uh, the banks has to be a bit more innovative and be a bit more flexible. Like, for example, if the you know, uh, total uh, house, uh, household does not qualify, mm. uh, what about considering second income, second sure. jobs and things like that? Sure. And the banks are showing a lot more willingness to yeah. be flexible in looking to this. And um, you know, we are very touched also by some of the presence of parents who actually come sure. all the way to assist their children, children to, to, do this. to top up the, you know, the income. So these are the ways that uh, we are exploring so that the banks can uh, give them better avenues. What we have been hearing is that, you know, the loan tenure of 35 yeah, years, there's yeah, a proposal yeah. to bring it back to 40. So what's your view on that? Is it really a good enough commitment? Because ultimately, it really doesn't change too much, right? Mm. Yes, I think uh, that's why we feel that a lot of consideration has to be given so that the buyers have breathing space. I think it is a matter of juggling uh, their commitments, you know, uh, especially young couples, mm -hmm. even combined uh, income is still not enough. Right. So, you know, the bank should look at the most appropriate and uh, the most affordable uh, program for yeah. the couple, the young ones yeah. and Good. also yeah. the mature Good. couple. Maybe as you're answering that, as you're answering that about the banks, mm -hmm. now I have a question here. Maybe if you're asking the banks to give a little bit more leeway and flexibility on granting this loan, well, of course, it would include the B40 yes. groups itself. Don't you think this may actually cause the NPL non-performing loan to possibly rise and increase? Are we looking at a subprime possible kind yes. of thing? Yeah? Well, uh, we are not actually asking the bank to take unnecessary risk. Mm -hmm. But what we are asking is to be a bit more lenient in mm. the guidelines. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, they have to safeguard their own interests. And I think, yeah. like I said, our Bank Nagara is very firm yes. and uh, they're very uh, well, mm. safe as far as guideline they've uh, given out. Mm. So we have to strike the balance between safeguarding, like you said, you know, the prime uh, problems that may arise yes. if we are a bit too uh, generous in giving out loans. Sure. As also, there is a need to keep the property sector moving mm. even in times that we're facing today. We cannot just sort of uh, be too optimistic and wait for things to improve. Mm. We have to make things happen. So I think that is where we need the banks to be very proactive. And I think um, the government has done their part. They've given one billion, yeah? okay. a special so allocation. The government has given one billion a special yes. allocation itself. Yes. For yeah. the banks to disperse uh, to the appropriate For parties. the banks to disperse. Yes. Okay. So that money comes from the federal government. Yes. Okay. So I think this is the part that we're playing, the government, okay. the banks, and the people will have to get together okay. and come up with a formula so that we can keep the property sector, especially as you said, okay. the B40 group is the most critical. We have to keep okay. it moving. So, so yeah. Abi, your KPKT is actually consolidated some agencies like Ruma, Vip, Prima, mm. PPA, 1M, SPNB, for the delivery of affordable housing to the B40, yeah. including uh, PPR and Rumah, Masra Ryan and all that. Now, what is the role of 
like SPNB and also Prima. I know you mentioned about the records of achieving some sales itself. Mm -hmm. And we know those sales may not necessarily turn into actual final sales subject to loans, yeah. approvals and all that. So the, the question will be, what happened to all the, the issues of the legacies left behind, like for example, like Prima, Prima yeah. and SPNBs, you know, for example, uh, we heard, we read uh, Prima having many legal cases and a lot mm. of legacies and issues. In fact, we extended and invited them for the show, but have yet mm. to receive any positive response yet. But so, could we hear from you? Yes, uh, we have to be very um, direct about the issue. We have to face a problem that do exist. Sure. And we have taken note, we have uh, given all the information to mm. the uh, chartered accountants and all that to mm. come up with a report which they will table to us in the next uh, maybe one or two months. Okay. Uh, but at that time, we have a clearer picture as how we should move SPNB and Prima. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have to try to keep the units under these two, uh, SPNB and Prima, moving as much as we can. Okay. Uh, because uh, it is our obligation too to keep it uh, very much in the public's uh, we call it the uh, sphere of uh, sure. visibility yeah. because whatever you say about it, Prima and SPNB has got name. It's got mm. some sort of branding to it. Okay. People sure. know about it. Sure. Yeah. The only thing is that we have to work out the finances. Like right. you said, we acknowledge there's been problem. We okay. have to rectify it. And the best way is to get the professionals yeah. to give a clear and very objective view about it. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back, um, back to the show. Stay tuned. We're going to see you after the break. Cari hadiah untuk hari ibu bapa? Ada Jintel. Jintel di Spesta dengan teknologi Moon Hand Massage yang terkini memberi urutan yang menyenangkan dan selesa. Sesuai untuk ibu bapa kesayangan anda. Welcome back to Bernama Property Hot Seat presented by Sun Surya. For those who have just tuned in, Vincent and Chris here together with our Honourable Deputy Minister of Housing and Local Government, YB Datuk Raja Kamaru. So YB, now back to our topic. My first question on this segment will be, under the Dasar Perumahan Negara, there is the National Affordable Housing Council, chaired by our Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, the question the public is also asking is, is it actually the Prime Minister himself taking charge of the affordable housing or is it actually the Minister of KPKT? 
whose portfolio is this or who is championing this right now? Well, uh, KPKT is of course still very much in charge. Okay. But the Prime Minister has shown great concern mm. and I think it should be highly appreciated. Because just to give you an example, the Prime Minister even said that even for the affordable housing and even the low-cost housing, shouldn't we at least be looking at some sort of mock-up? Because he feels that the lower income group has been shortchanged in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. So that shows how concerned the Prime Minister is. Okay. And he's constantly engaging with us and we appreciate that. I think it helps. But of course, uh, he does not uh, really come in or interfere in any way. Okay. But it's just uh, the additional leverage uh, does help. Like, uh, you know, the property uh, campaign was launched by him. You know? uh, yes. So he, he took his time out and spent quite a fair bit of time yes. with us. Oh, what, we, what we've been hearing is that about this affordable housing is that you're talking about a price range of 90000 to about 300000 mm. kind of thing. And then you're looking at at least at 900 square feet. Mm. Uh, and it varies from city to city. So my question is that 90000 for 900 square feet, is it really doable? Well, <coughs> maybe sometime we have to look at some form of uh, what they call it, uh, subsidy. Right. But uh, these are the things that we have to balance out. How much are we willing to subsidize? Um, but at the same time also, we don't want this affordable housing to be stuck in this image as being a very low quality and what do you call it, second or third rate right. property. Uh, that's why uh, under our KPKT now, even for affordable housing, we would want to have SIA, Social Impact Assessment, right. because we don't want them to be categorized as those, you know, you take it or leave it. Sure, because sure. quality of life sure. is also very, very important to us. Yes, just take you on on this. I mean, we know housing, the, the nation is very, very crucial yeah. at this mm. moment. It's part of the Pakata Manifesto, yeah. we know that. Um, and all we are talking, all, all, all program long is about uh, owning and owning and owning and owning, yeah. right? Then, of course, there's an option called rent to own, yeah. correct? Yeah. And we know, you know, buy, rent for five years and then you have the option to buy, yeah. right? Then, then I'm also saying, are we willing to look at housing policy, housing the nation on a rental model? Yeah. Because you don't really have to go and own it, but as long as you have roof over your head. So which concept is which? Yeah, we have to move with the times. Yep. Uh, in Malaysia, people have always been you know, very much wanting to own their first home as right. early as possible. Mm -hmm. right. But you look at the trends overseas. Um, people are very mobile today. Yes. Yeah? They don't want to be stuck or be tied down to any particular uh, you know, cities or uh, yeah, areas. So this rent-to-own is a good concept because the way I see it, it kills two birds with one stone. Yes. Sure. It gives a flexibility that people may want to migrate or move to another a better environment and also give them a breather, yeah? mm, a space yeah. that as they consolidate their position in the sure. career mm. sure. and their income improves, sure. you know, combined income, husband yeah. and wife, then they can choose for a better property. So give them time and options. Mm. So I think this rent to own is a very useful. Uh, okay. What about a pure rent model? Yeah. Yeah, pure rent model. Because if we do that, the yeah. bank and financial institution really doesn't have to come in. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the pure rent has always been there. So right, yes. I think um, it does not really change the scenario very much. Yeah. I think the youngsters yeah. today, yeah. Uh, as we have seen, yeah. they would want to work things mm. out on their own. And because uh, it is very difficult for a lot of them to start mm. uh, buying homes sure. on the mm. first job sure. or the first couple of sure. years. So they, they need a special grace period yeah. to pick up their uh, career and also yeah. their, their pay in order to yeah. come to that bracket. So, with YB, on that note yourself, there's this very important thing that we have thought of, uh, some of the solutions provided and suggested by property developers. More and more affordable units are actually built outside city centres. Mm -hmm. Should we not actually redevelop old buildings inside the city centre, which has better con connectivity instead? Sure. Uh, CBD, Central Business District, okay. the inner yeah. city areas have very good infrastructures. So. Why be that means that basically the KPKT need to tell all the ministries and all the state governments and councils that they should consider approving higher plot ratio and higher density so that older buildings can be torn down and more and more affordable properties can build homes can be built in city centre itself. Would this be something that you are you will advocate and you think that is a good idea? If it is feasible, yes. Uh, 
um, when I say feasible, I yes. do not mean just financially. Yes. In sure. terms of the carrying capacity yeah. of the city, yeah. because uh, if you look at the density yes. in certain CBD areas yes. in Kuala right. Lumpur, it is already very congested. Okay. So how much can it take? So right. we have okay. to balance out. You know, balancing. The, yeah, the balancing. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, okay. developers want to maximize profit, okay. but uh, as the you know government and also the, the ministry that controls okay. the local government and approval, we have to s make sure that the quality of uh, life will be uh, maintained at a certain level. Mm. So, although I agree that CBD should be further enhanced. Um, Okay. Internationally, okay. Uh, what we call it, urban regeneration. Okay. Is Maybe very one popular. very last question, very mm. quick answer from you is the idea of having residential tenancy act. Yeah. It means that act that's supposed to be part of the DRN, the DASAR, whereby we want to have the act that we that the landlords shouldn't discriminate, discriminate. when they rent out. Right. But mm -hmm. what what we are trying to say is why there must be also acts that also protects the landlords. Landlords, when they cannot collect rental, they must be able to evict the tenants very fast, very, very quickly. Will KPKT look into this and, and enforce it as well? Yes, I think the law has to be fair okay. to both yes. parties. Yes, very um, good. And even the landlord needs mm. protection. It cannot work on, on just a certain level and only for one side. It has yeah. to be a very mm. well balanced and appropriately uh, address both parties' concern because when there's a contract, there are two parties to it and the aggrieved parties should be able to take the matter to court and get uh, justice. Yes, Very good, YB. So it must be speedy actions and shortcut yes. it so that the landlords don't have to wait very, very long yes. for such action in order to evict or recover their rental. Yes. Now, thank you very much, YB, for thank today's you. session. It has been a great, great session with you. Um, we are thankful with your policy update and, of course, the inputs and call your comments on behalf of KPKT. We look forward to KPKT continuing championing the Rayat and also property developer friendly policies. That's very important. Huh? And uh, for those, thank you for watching Banama Property Hot Seat presented by Sun Surya. If you have any questions that you want the people or ministers from the government to answer, please email to banamaproperty at gmail.com. Stay tuned. Next week, with another different VIP taking our hot seat, Vincent and Chris, signing out. <laughs>